news that's now online and on social media has reached epic proportions. The backlash against Google's YouTube widens. I don't need to introduce this guy at all. Um, he is uh, one of the co-founders of Pubmatic, um, and uh, the next voice you hear from will be the CEO of our company, Rajiv Guel, my boss. I would like to welcome him to the stage. All right, good morning and welcome. Welcome to our eighth uh, ad revenue event, our first time outside of the US, while actually still being in the US. I'm not quite sure how that works, but uh, that is how it works. Uh, as you just saw, advertising and the businesses of advertising is growing increasingly complex. And it's getting harder and harder for both brands as well as content creators, publishers, media companies to cut through the noise. Now, all of our businesses are in a constant state of flux. Technologies are rapidly evolving and market demands can change at the drop of a hat. Over the past few months, we've seen a dramatic shift towards quality and transparency, with a variety of key topics taking center stage. First, viewability. Marketers are very reasonably demanding that every ad impression that they purchase actually be viewable by a consumer. Ad fraud. Ad fraud is a multi-billion dollar issue plaguing everyone in the industry, including all of the people here in the room. Attribution remains mediocre at best online. And of course, fees and fee transparency conversations are coming to the forefront as brand advertising moves into the programmatic channel. And lastly, of course, we can't forget about the consumer. The consumer is most focused on consuming the content and services that they like to consume, while at the same time engaging with brands that they want to engage in. And because of many of the issues that we're talking about today, they're going to ad blocking in droves. Now, in fact, according to a recent study by Adobe, 50% of marketers identify brand safety 
as a major concern of media buying. So think about that in the context of a tens of billions of dollars industry. One of the biggest things that marketers are concerned about is brand safety. And this 50% number is particularly stark if you were to think about it in the context of traditional media channels like TV, radio, and print. Now transparency is a concern really for both sides of the ecosystem. The Guardian recently released a study that indicated that only 30 cents of every dollar spent on their website or their properties got passed through to the Guardian themselves. And the flip side of that, 90% of advertisers are reviewing their contracts right now for more transparency with their demand side platforms, agency trading desks, and agencies. That's a pretty stark number, 90%, and I think uh, puts in context the lack of trust across the industry today. Now into the breach, there are a number of different solutions. So publishers are increasingly forming alliances. I think media companies, magazine companies, newspapers, they increasingly recognize that it's not the other newspaper company or the other magazine company that's their competitor. In fact, it's the technology, so-called technology companies that are sucking 80, 90% of every incremental media dollar uh, out, of the, out of the ecosystem. And as a result, a number of alliances are popping up. Pomatic recently announced JPAD, Japan Publisher on Alliance for Digital, uh, in the Japan market. Uh, you'll hear from Nucleus's Seth Rogen, who's here today, uh, representing a number of different premium newspaper companies in the US. And these alliances are really focused on streamlining at scale the ability for marketers to find the right audiences in the right context. We also have a number of new names entering into ad tech, some a little bit more familiar, like Amazon and Adobe, others somewhat new, like Verizon and Spotify. But I think that the solutions that we have in market today are not really the right solutions for the future. In fact, I think we're witnessing the death of the ad exchange. The monolithic, homogenous platform that brings buyers and sellers of media together and commoditizes inventory in the process. First of all, principles matter. And by principles, I mean marketers and publishers. These are the two entities in the ad advertising ecosystem that are of paramount importance. And all of us in the ad tech industry need to remember that what we do facilitates interactions and capabilities for publishers and marketers. Second, publishers are rightfully taking back control of their inventory and ad decision making. The trend towards header bidding and wrapper solutions is a perfect manifestation of this. With the wrapper solution, a publisher can control which, which buyers have access to the publisher's inventory. They set the pricing rules, and in fact, they even close the auction uh, that runs for every single ad impression. So publishers are taking back control of their inventory. Third is transparency, both from a publisher as well as from a marketer perspective. I think many of you here are familiar with what J.P. Morgan Chase did recently. They cut the number of publishers they're running their advertising on from 400,000 to 5,000 without any impact on return on ad spend. Now think what would happen to the ecosystem if many other marketers followed suit, which may very well happen. Similarly, publishers want to know that the brands that they're working with, the advertisers that show up on their properties, on their websites, on their mobile apps and devices, also reflect the same value proposition that they're creating for consumers with their services and with their media. I think quality has come front and center, most recently with the Google YouTube fiasco, which is likely to cost Google some billion dollars in advertising. The pendulum has shifted too far towards pure audience targeting and away from finding the right audience in the context of the right environment. And quality goes beyond that. Within programmatic, marketers increasingly want to buy on a placement and priority level. And they can't do that inside of these monolithic ad exchanges. And lastly, data. I think the two most underpenetrated categories of data in the ecosystem today are telco data and publisher data. And it's unlikely that both of these data sets will be made available on top of a commoditizing ad exchange. Now at Pubmatic, we've been powering advertising automation for well over 10 years. Started with our founding in 2006, with our focus on real-time bidding for publishers in 2009, private marketplaces shortly thereafter, header bidding solutions, and so on and so forth. But I think where we are headed next is even more exciting than where we've been. 
the most important trend that we are focused on as a company is brand advertising in the programmatic channel. The last five to seven years of programmatic has really been about direct response advertising coming into programmatic. Direct response advertising is a roughly 12 to $13 billion industry, and over the next five years or so, it'll grow to about $20 billion. Brand advertising is a similar 12 to $13 billion, but is slated to grow to over $50 billion in the next five years. That's a massive opportunity for everybody here. Second, we're bringing holistic ad serving solutions to the market for our publishers. Publishers need simpler solutions that combine workflow, data, sales capabilities, prioritization across traditional IO based business, as well as all flavors of programmatic, preferred deals, private marketplaces, biddable IO, automated guaranteed. And we are bringing these solutions to market in the form of a wrapper solution, as well as our unified ad server. Data activation is one of the key things that we're focused on. Now, we don't have a lot of great telco data at Pubmatic, but we do have a tremendous number of relationships with premium publishers. And we are working very hard to bring that data available, uh, not only for publishers' own media, but also to apply across other publishers' media. We're also rapidly moving and working with many of the folks here, a few of the folks here, I should say, on pilot solutions that are more SaaS or subscription oriented, that give publishers complete control over their programmatic advertising business and let them manage all of the economics with it. And lastly, at all levels of the organization, we are focused on bringing the highest quality of inventory possible to buyers. We recognize that on the sell side of the ecosystem, we have a significant role to play in supply chain integrity and ensuring that all of the inventory that we bring to market is both fraud free, is human, uh, as well as well described and transparent. Now our innovation is driving tremendous financial results for Pubmatic. I plotted here revenue growth on the vertical axis and profitability on the horizontal axis. And you can see that we are executing up there with the best companies in the industry. But more importantly, our innovation is driving customer satisfaction. So a little over a year ago, we started measuring net promoter score. So promoters of Pubmatic minus detractors across our publisher base. And you can see the initial results were not so pretty, a negative 18% net promoter score in Q1 of 2016. We've worked hard every quarter to improve that, and I'm very pleased to share that we now have a 39% positive net promoter score. And that compares very favorably to a 14% average for technology services providers. Thanks, Laylee. So let's talk a little bit about where the industry is headed next. Uh, and what I'm going to talk about here is really going to guide a number of the discussions that we have programmed for today. So first, we all have to work hard to clean up the supply chain and manage the ad tech tax. There are a number of key leaders here in the room. I think this is incumbent upon all of us. Many of you guys heard Mark Pritchard uh, speak at the IAB annual leadership meeting earlier this year. And one of the things uh, that he said that struck me is that for too long, Procter & Gamble, and I think a and by association, has treated digital media as a special medium. And as a result of that, they've let it escape the regular supply chain and integrity rules that all other media uh, is held accountable to, print, radio, television. Uh, and so that's got to change. It, it's high time, I think, for that to change at a tens of billions of dollars of, of industry scale. Second, we have to build teams that are capable of developing creative solutions to tomorrow's challenges. This requires diversity and inclusion, not only in the demographic sense, but also from the perspective of thinking. And you'll hear from Pubmatic's Senior Vice President of HR later today about what Pubmatic has been doing on this front. I think it's also key that we all work collectively to capitalize on the influx of brand spend into programmatic. Many of the challenges that the industry faces today is as a result of the industry ahead looking at brand spend coming into the programmatic channel, that $50 billion, as opposed to the direct response segment of the market that's characterized programmatic so far. And if we don't get this right, it will set all of us back uh, a, a good decade or more. And lastly, we have to improve our focus on the consumer. So we get together in rooms like this and we talk about header bidding, wrappers, pixels, uh, we talk about real-time bidding transactions. Of course, consumers have little time or desire to spend on these types of topics. What they care about is interacting with the services and content that they love 
and being engaged by the brands that they, they, that they want to spend time with. And so we have to always keep in mind uh, what is happening from a consumer perspective. I'm extremely excited about the caliber of moderators and panelists that we have with us today. I know all of you will add valuable perspective to the discussion uh, that take place throughout the day.